It all went wrong for the Proteas on that third day when all the wickets fell for so few runs. The first innings was brilliant. We made 313 runs. On the third day, South Africa came in and tried to bat, but only 83 runs came as we went home packing early the fifth day never seen and it was england that were the ones that did it to us so we thought to ourselves right can we bring in a south african cricket then we said i no they're going to complain too much let's get an impartial perspective one of our analysts uh, one of our commentators right here on the sabc ed rainsford played his cricket in zimbabwe has uh, even gone to the world cup but then injury and you had to be sent home you were there already ed yeah and i hear they call you trevor Noah. i wonder why I, I don't know, yellow bone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was a tough, tough game for, for South Africa and a tough series. Now, the interesting thing for me, and I, I'm not like the most ardent cricket fan follower, but the one thing I did look up and I was like, England beat us. So is this unusual? Why is everyone crying? And then I saw the stats actually say that of all nations that we play cricket against, England have beaten us the most. They are the one team that, get, that beats South Africa the most consistently, the most often, almost across all forms of cricket. And um, why were we surprised to have lost this occasion? England regularly beat us. Well, you look at, like you say, you look at the <coughs> stats. In, since readmission at home, uh, South Africa have played 40 series at home and they've won 28. So just that will tell you that South Africa have had a, a dominant effect at home, having lost seven of those series and, and drawn five. So that's the surprise. It, that is but the in surprise. general, they have beaten us 58 matches in all cricket of 140 matches, 144 matches we played. In fact, we've only won 31. They've yep. beaten us 58 times. We won 31. 55 have been draws. So England is that team for us. They're our hoodoo team. I think Australia more the hoodoo team. I They've think only beaten us 52 times. Yeah, but in, since readmission. If yeah. you look at since readmission, I don't think England have beaten South Africa that many times in Test Series. I think it's two, and Australia have beaten us So five. you're saying lately, yeah. lately. Yeah, or lately. Yeah. <laughs> and so South Africa since readmission have been on, a, on an upward curve on how they are improving their cricket and Why? becoming number one. Why did they beat us now? I think... Uh, at home at the Wanderers. I mean, the Green Mamba. Yeah. That's us. The Wanderers is we're unbeatable at the Wanderers. Well, we're going to look at a few things. You look at Dale Stain wasn't playing. You look at Vernon Philander. That partnership for South Africa with the new ball has, has yielded a, lo a lot for South Africa over a number of years now. And that's what got South Africa to number one with the help of also Imona Imoko. You're also missing the experience of Graham Smith and Jacques Callas. If you look at the bowling that was at the Wanderers, all the bowlers combined have about 80 test matches. Just Stuart Broad and, and Jimmy Anderson have plus 200. Mm. So they're so more experienced. Three we, times more. So our, our, in a nutshell, our team is, is changing. It's changing. It's uh, a young team. Alvira spoke about it last week. It's a, it's a team in transition. You mm. look at 2015, uh, England played 14 test matches. South Africa only played seven. And some of those te test matches weren't even, were not complete because they went to Bangladesh and they, and they were rained out. They went to India and were comprehensively beaten there. So the confidence was low coming here. We have a, another test to play. We yep. go to Centurion. We've lost the series. Yep. What now? Well, I'm going to break it down. And, and strategically, I look at how when South Africa went to India, they were, uh, India prepared very difficult conditions for South Africa. Now, you look at South Africa at home. They win 75% of their games at Centurion, 67% at Newlands, 42 at Johannesburg, and 41 at Durban. So that's Why not play the first two games in the, in the, in the stadiums where you win more mm. and with your best player available in Dale Steyn? Because he went to Durban and then didn't play again. Mm. So if he was a Centurion, you won up in the series and then you're putting pressure back on England in the rest of the series and then maybe... So but we got the calendar wrong. We well, should have started I, strategically, there could have been there could have been changes there. Uh, from the tour of India, they could have taken away what India did in, in strategic wise mm. and trying to get their best foot forward. Uh, just looking at the stats, but again, traditionally the the Boxing Day Test matches are played in Durban or Pretoria, so that is a tradition. But if maybe if you want to win a series, maybe change, change things tradition. around a little bit. Uh, there's another big story happening in cricket. Now, I'm going to take our viewers to this. This has been happening uh, for the last couple of weeks. It was a big scandal. Uh, Chris Gale, one of the great cricketers in the world right now, he blazes, he kicks, hits sixes all the time. Now, he just come off the pitch in a cricket match, and uh, when he got off the pitch, there was a beautiful lady who does the interviews. She works for a cricket channel, and she came to interview him. This is what he said, and he got fined and he found trouble. Tell us what you think. Incredibly aggressive approach for you too. It looks like you're absolutely just smashing this innings. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, 
I want to come and have an interview with you as well. That's the reason why I'm here. So just to see your eyes for the first time. It's nice. So hopefully we win this game and we can have a drink after. Don't blush, baby. I'm not blushing. Um... So I'm looking forward to go recover well and look in your eyes. I'm going to leave it on that note. Well done. Thanks. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Chris Gale found trouble, eh? They find him, they said it's unprofessional, he can't talk to women like that. Um, what's your view? Your, cricket is your sport. What has Chris Gale done there that's wrong? I think he just pushed the boundary there. I think at that point, uh, the humour was lost. I think there was an element where he was trying to be a bit funny and also an element where he was being disrespectful. I think disrespectful to the lady actually trying to conduct the interview. Mm. And so, I, I mean, straight after this, he, he sent an apology. He... He definitely saw the, the wrong in what he did, and I, I, I don't think that you can condone anything like that. So um, in a nutshell, don't Mac live on TV <laughs> in front of the masses when the other person is just trying to do their job. Yeah, well, it, it, it's just a no-no. I mean, if anyone had to come sit across here and you speak to you and then all of a sudden you throw a, uh, a gesture that is inappropriate, mm -hmm. it's not going to shed a good light on you. So in that instance, I think he was pushing the boundary, and I think... Uh, it was handled co correctly off the field, and he sent the apology afterwards. Right, so there you have it. That's what happened to Chris Gale. He found trouble for that. Remember that. Don't do that, because we've got plenty of very attractive ladies here at SABC Sport. Footballers beside the pitch there. Romi Taitas, Bompoma, Boy, Bolle, Bumuzuri. Do not come there, say, Mini Lami, and say, Hey, hey, what do I do? Dina, Dina, what do I do? Hey, I'm a fine in the world if you do that thing. Uh, apparently, you can commentate football. Can I? I heard this. You're from Zim. I hear your Zimbabwean you know, football commentary is amazing. I, I like to think that I'm half Zimbabwean, half South African at so the moment. So can I hear this Zimbabwean football commentary? Well, my wife's going to kill me for this. But anyway, here we go. So when I was growing up, we, we, we watched football in a black and white television. Uh. So the, the commentary would come on and it would be, if you are watching this in a black and white television, Dynamos is in the black and the Highlanders is in the white. If you are watching it in color television, it's in Dynamos in the blue and Highlanders in the white. I, over to you, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, don't quit your day job. Your cricket job is the one. <laughs>